Thank you for watching our virtual performance of Ola Yelo's Ubi Caritas. Be sure to like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. At this time, we also want to invite singers across the globe to join in our next virtual worldwide Silent Night project. You can find more information about this project on Facebook and on our website, musephoenix.org. We hope you'll consider contributing your voice and joining with us in unity during this unusual period of social distancing. Hi everyone, thanks for being here with us tonight. We're really excited to have with us Ola Yelo. Hi Ola, it's great to see you. Thank you for joining us this evening. Um, as I'm sure you know, my name is Erica Glenn and I'm the music director of Phoenix Singing. And we're thrilled to have compiled some questions from people around the world who would like to ask you a bit about your process. Hey, Erica, thanks so much for having me on. Absolutely. Uh, if you don't mind, we'll go ahead and get started with a question from Rafael from Mexico. He asks, what was your initial draw to choral music? I grew up primarily as an instrumentalist, but have started singing in community choirs and I find myself enjoying the performance in a very different way. So again, what was your initial draw to choral music? Well, I, uh, I was an instrumentalist myself, uh, always been a, uh, a pianist, uh, that's been my only instrument. Um, and, uh, but I loved choral music when I grew up as a kid and as a teenager, I would listen to quite a, a lot of choral music. Um, but I never sang, sang in choir until high school. I went to a music high school in Norway uh, where we had to sing in choir, so, uh, which was a great gift for me because uh, otherwise I might not, not have done that. So, um, and we, I loved it and um, kept singing in chamber choir the first couple of years of, uh, of uh, uh, music conservatory. And then I also sang in the Oslo Philharmonic Choir for a while. Um, so that was a great way to both experience the small, the intimate chamber choir experience and the large, you know, symphonic choir and, and to get to stand behind an orchestra. So, um, so that, yeah, that meant a lot for um, me as a, as a choral composer, um, but I was never, a, you know, a great singer. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Thank you. Um, moving on, Jillian from Oregon asks, do you hear compositions in your mind and then transcribe them, or does the composition take you on a journey as you compose it? Um, yeah, definitely the latter. I, I, um, I never usually have an idea just kind of appear, you know, in my head or, or you know, walking around or, or waking up in the middle of the night and just have a, a sort of a uh, epiphany. Um, so that never really happens. It's always usually just me sitting down to compose um, on the keyboard. I usually use a keyboard and then uh, so I can use sample libraries and use uh, MIDI sounds that sound more similar to what you're actually writing for. Um, but yeah, usually it's, um, it's more just sitting down to, to work. Great. Mara has a question too, she's from Sweden. She asks, what have you not yet achieved or accomplished as a composer that you would like to? That is, do you have a musical bucket list? Yeah, I would love to score, uh, I would love to score movies um, or television and, uh, and video games uh, too. So that's definitely um, the one, the, the three things I would love to do. That's great. Um, <laughs> This, this is a question that's more directed towards the unusual time that we find ourselves in right now. Elise from Oregon asks, how do you see the world of performance evolving dur during these strange times of physical distancing? What sorts of projects have you done and plan to do to feel some semblance of normalcy as a musician? 
That's a good question. Um, it's, it's still different for me because I'm not uh, primarily a performer. Uh, so I work, uh, most of my job anyway is, is to work by myself in a room <laughs> uh, as a composer, you know, um, and then I perform sometimes. Um, but so my job kind of doesn't change too much uh, these days, but uh, other than that, you have to be inside all the time. But um, I think I think things will, you know, when this passes, everything will pretty much go back to normal. Um, and but I think you know, uh, so I, yeah, I think that's pretty much what's going to happen. Other than that we've learned something from this and learned how to use all these like on online tools and what you you're doing tonight and stuff that's pretty complex right and uh, uh so i think we're learning a, a lot from this experience and that there will be more online uh performing or sharing uh in the future um and also probably that the software will get better and better because we have to make it better right now. So I think that'll happen. That's great to hear. That's a very positive spin on things. <laughs> Here's our last question for you. Um, Linda from Arizona enjoyed your recent release of Luminous Night with the Tenebrae Choir and wonders what other projects you have on the immediate horizon. Well, thank you so much. Um, I, uh, we have another single uh, coming out in a little under three weeks, end of end of May. Um, that's sort of the the complement to the dark. Uh, sorry, the Luminous Night single that came out uh, this Friday. Um, so that's called uh, Dark Night, uh, which is a, a short, a, a bridged version of of the lyrical parts of my Dark Night of the Soul. So it's it's much shorter than the original. Um, and then we're going to put those two singles together in an EP eventually. Uh, so it'll be Dark Knight followed by Luminous Night as it's kind of, kind of like one piece. And wow. uh, we'll also then publish a score with those two together. Um, so that's, that's sort of the most uh, immediate uh, thing on the uh, horizon right now. Oh, that's great. Very exciting. Well, do you have any final parting words to this very diverse assembly of people that have gathered digitally to, to view the concert tonight? I just uh, hope you all have, a, all have a wonderful time and uh, hope you're all well and stay safe. Thanks so much, Ola. We appreciate your time. My pleasure. Great to see you. Bye.